What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Johnny. Back in here, one more reaction video, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I got another historical one. So you know how the whole world has been uh, radicalized now. I guess that's the term that's going on with the youth and why they're pushing you know, communism and socialism. And we think these concepts are new. However, I got a video from 1966 to show the history just repeats itself. And most people don't know about Manning Johnson and his book, Color, Communism, and Common Sense, that was written in the 19. 56 or 57, one of those years. Um, but also, most people don't know that the communist movement actually came to Alabama first in 1928. And so the, the minds of, of Americans, especially black Americans, has been manipulated since we've been free. We've never had an opportunity to think for ourselves. And as a man thinks, so is he. Shout out James Allen. So we're going to look into this radicalization and what's been going on. And I want you to tell me if this video sounds like it's from 1966 or it's from 2022. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. Get yourself on in here now. As I've said, man, the goal is to reach a million subscribers and start a million conversations. However, we can reach 100 million conversations. Look here, man. I'm a firm believer that we can kill all the narratives in today's world, man. We're just spirits encased in human flesh, trying to figure out this thing called life. We're not nearly as divided as the media would want you to think. So if you like what you hear, please share this video far and wide few particulars that make Omaha different from New York are just incidental. Mm -hmm. The problem exists because white people think they're better than black people and they want to oppress us and they want us to allow ourselves to be oppressed. This is the big, I agree with you uh, perfectly, this is the basic problem. Then what do you that want white to people uh, think they're better than I can others? Do. I can't solve the problem. You guys mm -hmm. pull the strings at closed schools. You guys draw the boundaries that keep our kids restricted to the ghetto. You guys write up the restrictive covenants that keep us out of houses. So it's up to you to talk to your brothers and your sisters and persuade them that they have a responsibility. We've assumed ours for over 400 years, and we're tired of this kind of stuff now. We're not going to suffer patiently anymore. No more turning the other cheek. No more blessing our enemies. No more praying for those who despitefully use us. We're going to show you that we've learned the lessons you've taught us. We've studied your history, and you did not take over this country by singing we shall overcome you did not gain control of the world like you have it now by dealing fairly with a man and keeping your word you're treaty breakers you're liars you're thieves you rape entire continents and races of people then you wonder why these very people don't have any confidence or trust in you your religion means nothing your law is a farce and we see it every day you demonstrated it in alabama and i can say you because you're part of the whole system you profit from it in fact you make your living from it you could Hey, on God, tell me that's going to sound like this was right now, 2022, Black Lives Matter press conference. Like, we, we hate that people assume that black Americans are a monolith when it comes to violence or to the poor imagery shown on TV. But we see, this is in 1966, that we're telling the white men, no, you're a part of that as well. See, we've always wanted to put people in groups, yet we get offended when we're put in groups. You know, when I was a kid, I always heard um, there's two things that stuck out, man. Treat others the way you want to be treated, and sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And we've made men so emotional, and we're now we got trigger words and safe spaces, which that's just a whole different concept. I don't think men should be triggered at all. Um, it's your job to be stoic. But however, we've got so far with groups, and now look how isolated we are. I keep saying, man, America is the Hunger Games, and no one is paying attention. Walk around and talk to people, stand up in your pulpit on Sunday and preach nice little songs and say, now we're going to give thanks to the Lord for he is good and old Jesus be among us. As far as we're concerned, your Jesus is contaminated, just like everything else you've tried to force upon us is contaminated. Mm -hmm. well, so you uh, can have him. And here's what I'll say. I wish you would follow Jesus like we followed him. Because if you did that, then we'd be in charge tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is so bad that we can have no understanding at all. You think it's gotten to the point where there can never be that reconciliation? Then? No. You talk about justice, and it means one thing to you, and we talk about it, it means something else to us. Mm -hmm. And it'll always be that way. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd like you to know I have a terrible feeling against preachers, because I think you guys are the ones who are largely responsible for the problem in the first place. And you can accept it or not any way you choose. And for you, this may be an excursion, you know, in, what, across what, the what line. About the person that wants to listen. And I agree with what he's saying about preachers, that they were 
you know, influenced by the communist movement as well and influenced by Margaret Sanger and being pro-abortion, which is why we have the issue going on now. And, and the amount of young women who make jokes about getting abortions on Twitter, it's, it's insane. Um, we don't take life serious and we don't value the spirits that we create. And I'm a firm believer, man, you reap what you sow. And you keep being out here living on a negative, negative frequency and you're going to keep attracting negative things into your life. Until you accept that you control your destiny, your mind is 100% open. What happened in the past is there for you to learn from it, but not for you to repeat it. You become what you think about. So if you stand around comparing yourself to what happened back then, I promise you'll repeat it in your life. Embrace new concepts, embrace new ideas, and look for forward towards the future. I genuinely feel that I want to listen. Well, if you listen and try to do something, you get kicked out of your church. See, that's, that's the way your people are. And he said if he was to go to his church and try to per give a different message, he would get kicked out. I say, what happens when you have conversations between black liberals and black conservatives? I would like to pose that question. God bless you, little brother. Come back and see us again sometime. And don't look back in anger. Thanks for taking so taking it so well. He thought he thought we were going to do in here like they do to us. If if we went in one of their places, everybody would have jumped out of their chairs and got some ropes together and hung. Symbols of oppression. And I want to show videos like this because my whole life I've been taught that cops are bad people. You know, like images like this don't go away. This is from the '60s, and right now there are four or five years old kids who are being taught that police are bad. That good police are going to shoot you. If we want to evolve past the division of black versus white, then we have to show kids different ideas. One of us, we couldn't even go in one of the places like this. Yeah. Which is the bigger threat to American democracy in the Constitution, a Vietnamese mother suckling her child or a white racist governor in Alabama who... Have they always made black Americans pro-immigrant? Pay attention. I, I, the communist plan is real slick, but it ain't changed that much over the last 50, 60 years. Who says, in so many words, to hell with the Constitution and Johnson and everything else. Which is the greater threat to democracy? This is true. These people have a kind of self-deception. You know, they believe. They circulate these myths so long that they've begun to believe them. And once you believe them, as they say, if you define a situation as being real, it will be real in its consequences. And, this is and the wildest part about that, right, is I've never heard a white person walk around saying they're better than me. I don't give a damn what they think. I care about what I think. But I do think the concept of black Americans running around saying white supremacy, white supremacy, that's terrible for you. Why are you saying somebody is supreme over you? No one is supreme over me. Or no one is inferior to me. It's just them and it's just me. Once again, like that's what I said. They, they, we've been trained to be in comparison mode. Get out, of, get out of comparison mode and get in creator mode. There's only one you. When your mama and your daddy made you, that DNA chemistry, that's a one of one. So there's something special inside of you that spirit can release to this world. But if you stay ca caught up on comparing yourself to this white man, to that Asian man, to that yellow man, because he's tall, because he's short, do you never can embrace and evolve into the, the true human that you could be. You know, a book that I, I was reading yesterday, it's in, uh, The Power of Positive Thinking. And as my man just said, you know, we become what we think about. That's Earl Nightingale, Bob Proctor, Marcus Aurelius, Frederick Nietzsche. I mean, you name it. So why keep telling young boys that white men have control over you, the white men are supreme over you? Why keep telling young black girls that you need this weave and this fake nails and you need these BBLs and you need to be on the internet twerking? Until we change the, the message that we're putting out to our youth, it doesn't matter what white America is saying. Because I promise, if you had 100 million white people out marching saying, we supreme, black kids ain't listening to that. Black kids is listening to the, the athletes, the rappers. What's their message? This is what's happened. Uh, they've come to actually believe this. And any evidence of the contrary, he's the exception. But the fact is, all the people who do struggle hard and they accumulate a down payment, they do want something better for themselves and for their kids, and they hope that their neighbors will be the same kind of people that they are. Well, the black man fights for the white man, not for himself. 
He tells you to bleed and you bleed. He say, go bleed in Korea for the white man and you go bleed because you have to. He tells you to go to Vietnam or Lebanon or Laos and we have to bleed. Then in Mississippi or Alabama or Omaha, Nebraska, where they're taking our rights and we know who the people are who are taking them, we don't have any blood then. And you know what, man? That's something I, I, I agree with 100%. I don't know how I would have dealt with the situation that Muhammad Ali was in or during that time if I'm if I'm watching my 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 family members be hung from trees and I'm watching the governor and the and the police chief get off on it and then you at the same time you asking me to go fight a war. I don't know. I don't feel safe leaving my family and my children here in an environment that's terrorizing them. However, I I, I do know as a man I could say man I would have put my life on the line for my family and whatever that would have required it would have required but I've always been uh, pro 2A. My grandpa was. My daddy is. And and that's a, that's why I say, man, I, history is tricky. Because there has been a lot of wrongs that have happened in America. And it just, the, the, the unfortunate part about it is that someone else has always wanted to capitalize off your pain. Like, I'm sure when these communist movements was coming into America and sitting down to these black communities, they made everything sound real nice. Set her down, had some pancakes, some eggs, some nice syrup on it. You know what I'm saying? It's the same with Black Lives Matter when the organizations start up. But until you understand that you control your destiny, no matter what obstacles are thrown your way, faith consists in your hard work of, and, and with believing God inside of yourself, that's what's missing. Is keep, we keep listening to, to a man's word and not listening to God and the intuition inside of us of how to make our situation better. And they didn't have the internet like we do in 2020. But come on now, man. We ain't in the 30s, we ain't in the 40s. You got to let that oppressed mindset go. Wherever you are right now, a, a year from now, you could be a millionaire if you grind your ass off. And it only sounds unbelievable until you make it happen. But once you've done it, you set the playbook for the next generation. Divorce yourself from your past and embrace a future, beautiful future, man. The sky's the limit. We're radical. Just because we want to get the rights that we fight overseas for so the white man can have. We fight over there to defend his women and children and defend his land from attack. And while we're over there fighting for him, our own people are being attacked by the same white people over here we're supposed to be fighting to defend. Right. Everybody's got something, something to fight for. Right? You got the rights that you should have, that you fought for? Do you feel that? Do you say, Sergeant, and I got out. Do you feel that you're living under those rights now? Why should he go over there and fight the Vietnamese? They've done nothing to him. Or can right in this own country, he can go places and he can't even get in a hotel. Right. I mean, and right. he can drive in a place and might not even be able to get gas if the people don't look at your license plate and see where you're from. That's what he was talking about. Have you ever been in Hawaii? Yeah. What do you think about you? They're black as you are, and I am, right? Yeah. Okay, then. What a bottle of beer cost you? 80 cents, don't it? Will they speak to you? Because they got long, pretty hair. No, that's not what the white men got there and contaminated them. You can't go to places in Japan, man. Well, that don't make it. You know what? You know why? The American white men. Yeah, but the Japanese gonna keep you out of why? But look, man, let me say this now. Even if you go with some other uh, over there and, and they treat, mistreat you, well, you can't feel too bad because that's not your home. But when you come to your own home, they mistreat you, then you really feel mistreated. Uh, this is my home here. And if it's being the fight, it's just fight here. Amen. Right. You know what I mean. Why go over that and fight? Have you ever been turned away from a hotel by a Vietnamese, no, no, by a Chinese, no, a Japanese, no, a Korean, no. a Lebanese? You know, something they miss it though is we've always had the power to build our own hotels, our own homes, our own jobs. We never needed anyone to give us anything. We hear so much about Black Wall Street was burned down and they destroyed Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street was built the second time. Look it up. Do you know what killed Black Wall Street the second time? Integration. Stop shopping with your own people. Like, it's so funny. We got this whole support black businesses campaign. But if you blind, buying your Black Lives Matter shirt or I'm black and proud, which I think all these clothes is just is pure, just comedy. But if you blind it from Target or Walmart, who are you supporting? You ain't supporting bro down the street. So why this concept of you've never had anyone else kick you out of a building, let somebody come to your house and you don't want them in there anymore. And that's why I say every man, America's for sale right now, bro. There's a reason Bill Gates is buying up all this farmland. Buy you some land and buy you some guns. You can buy you some land in Africa. Look how much land China is buying in Africa right now as we speak. There's a documentary called um, How China is Making Africa's China. 
everything is for sale. Buy you some land, buy you some guns. This ain't this. Like I said, we in 2022 now. Everybody can own some property. And if you ain't paying attention to what Bill Gates is doing and how they're trying to make ownership a thing of the past, you, you sleep at the wheel. Please. No. How about a white man? Yes. Then if we should fight, we should fight the man who's hurting us. And white man is one and he lives no. in this country. But this documentary and these things, man, they, they've... Imagine, because I know so many people didn't grow up in urban America. Imagine in your whole life you've been taught to look at white people as the enemy. Your whole life. And that's why the masses of black people, the minute you say something that remotely triggers them, they say you're a racist. Because we've been conditioned to think white people can't just have thoughts. They can't just be individuals. That can't just be how the way he feel because he got into it with somebody at his job four years ago. If white individuals feel a certain way, then it's their racist. If black people feel a certain way, that's just their black experience and you need to listen to them. You get what I'm saying? It's all tricky. Unless you're a black conservative or a black libertarian, or you just not even in the politics at all. You just got a different perspective to give. But I wanted to put this article up because, like I said, man, bro was, was radical, um, I guess, by the stance of political. You know, he never talked about how um, Republicans were disenfranchised out of power in the South, black Republicans too, because you always hear the Republicans, they never did nothing and blah, blah, blah. We know about the compromise of 1875 and all that and stuff, right? But when you want to talk about how this, this concept that we should be took care of by the government, where did that come from? That's, that's something that's kind of awkward. And so I got this article from NPR and if I'm not mistaken, they're a liberal site. Let me know if I'm wrong. Um, but we're going to find, he's talking to a professor and here we go. How did the Communist Party get started in Atlanta? Right? In 1928, the communist position internally was that African Americans in the South have a right to self-determination, meaning they have the right to create their own nation in the South. This position came out of Moscow. Ain't it crazy how they keep saying we are pro-Ukraine and fighting against Putin? And all of this is really, really weird, man. And that's why I say you got to read for yourself, do research for yourself, and think for yourself. I'm not even fully up on game on what's really going on with this communist, socialist, capitalist fight. All I know is I'm in the middle of it, unfortunately, just like you are too. And I'm a father, I'm a husband, and it's my job to to lead my family in a proper direction. With that idea in mind, they sent two organizations, two organizers to Alabama, and they went to Birmingham. And Martin Luther King was from down there, ain't he? Hey, man, look, bruh, when I say all of this it gets tricky, and then you think when Martin Luther King got knocked off at the end when him and Malcolm was starting to link up, and him and Malcolm was linking up. All this is weird. And they were there thinking they would organize white workers, and from white workers, black workers would follow. But no white workers have come forward. This is, and then you just keep going, and how they went and got the people. And, you know, how is it that they've positioned black people versus white people? When you go look at your average Black Lives Matter rally right now, Go look at the videos in them civil rights marches and tell me what you see. You see a lot of white people. And that's what we're going to skip down here and say, how did the Communist Party attract so many black people? And it's been the same thing during the Great Depression, unemployment. What happened right now? COVID. Shutdowns, lockdowns. I, got, I swear, history repeats itself. History repeats itself over and over again. And here we go again. The second thing was in 1931, we had a famous case or nine black men were falsely arrested for raping two white women and end up going to jail. Hey, that's why they put them police shootings on TV. <laughs> they got to emotionally manipulate you to get you out in the street to do something crazy. I'm not going to read through this whole article, but all I ask everyone or anyone to understand the mind of a kid being born into an environment, and the minute you gain consciousness around three or four years old, right? Everybody tells you that's the enemy. That's the enemy. I'll keep you safe. Like it's easy to blame the gangster rap music and the movies in Hollywood, but what if that's all you know you've been born into it? And when you open your eyes that it's false, everyone that you knew disowns you. Everyone who's new to the world, they're already criticizing you because you come from that other side. So you walk around as an alien and you have to prove yourself. And that's why I say you got to believe in yourself because once you awake to truth, everything that you knew before is going to dissolve. 
and you got to be comfortable with walking into the unknown because the unknown is where pure freedom is. I always say fear is false evidence appearing real. But if you can step forward and embrace a new future, divorce yourself from your past, man, God will bless you with everything you need and more. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. More reaction videos to come. Until next time, we out.